Dear students, welcome to the course Verilog Hardware Description Language. Uh, in the first part of the module two, we discussed the basic concepts of Verilog language like lexical conventions, data types, system tasks, and compiler directives. Okay. So now we'll begin with the second part of the module two, that is unit four, discussing about modules and ports. Basically, in this unit, we take a closer look at modules and ports from the Verilog language point of view. Okay, so in the module two, also module one, and we have so considered modules, right? With respect to ripple carry counter, how to instantiate. With respect to that, we have seen. So now we'll try to understand closerly uh, the what are the important parts in the modules, uh, which is optional. All these things. Okay. Identify the components of a Verilog module like definition such as module names, port list, parameters, variable declarations, data flow statements, behavioral statements, instantiation of other modules, and tasks or functions. So all these components uh, will identify where it is going to come, and this will be detailed uh, studied in next coming uh, units. Okay. Understand how to define the port list for a module and declare it in Verilog. Okay. Describe the port connection rules in a module instantiation. When you are doing a module instantiation, there are some port connection rules we need to know. Understand how to connect ports to external signals by there are two methods, ordered list and by name. This also we will try to understand. Explain hierarchical name referencing of Verilog identifiers. Okay, so these are all the concepts you may not understand by just reading this. We'll go through and then you summarize and come back so that you will understand what is meant by this. Okay. Basically, four topics we are going to cover here: module definition, port declaration, connecting ports, hierarchical name referencing. Okay. So today, in this video, we'll try to understand modules. Okay, with an example. So this is the block diagram of a Verilog module. Very important. Okay. So you need to. A module in Verilog consists of distinct parts, as shown in figure. Okay. So very first, you have module name. As I told you, module is the keyword. Then module name. And then port list, okay. Argument list you will have input output you are writing in module name after that, right? That is the port list. Then what are the ports you have uh, listed out there that you have to declare it? Either they are input or output, depending on if they are present, okay. So for example, in the simulation stimulus block, there are no port list are there, right? You have seen both type of programs. So in that case, it is optional. That's why I mentioned if ports present, okay. Then parameters we have seen in data types. So if any parameters are there, global constant, we'll be declaring it in first part. Okay. So then here, so these the, uh, the uh, components of the uh, functionality of the module. Okay. So here these all may come or they may not come. Okay. Any one block may come. Okay. Like that. Okay. So these are some of the optionals are there. We'll see. One by one. So first part, you will have declaration of wires, registers, and other variables. So data types we have studied wires and registers. Most important we have told, right? If anything related to this program, we have to declare it after the port list. We have to do that. Okay. Port declaration after that it will come. Okay. So it may be there, may not be there. Optional. Okay. So then there are three types of description I told you: data flow, behavioral, and gate level. So based on that, these blocks may present. If you are writing a data flow description, you will have the data flow statement with the keyword assigned. If you are writing a gate level description, you are instantiation of lower level modules. Okay. If you are writing a behavioral block, you will be learning about always and initial blocks. These are the keywords, and all behavioral statements go in these blocks. Okay. And then you will learn about the more about behavioral description that is tasks and functions. Okay. So the sub programs in a Verilog are called as tasks and Functions. Also, this comes under the middle part of the program. Okay, and finally comes the end module statement. Okay, so in this whole program, what you are writing module, module name, and then end module. This is compulsory part. Okay, remaining all they may present or may not present. Optional one. Okay, so this is about the uh, block diagram or components of a Verilog module. So important diagram to remember. Okay, just we'll explain this. A module definition always begins with the keyword module, the module name, then port list. Okay, so this is the keyword module, and then you have the module name. Anything you can give identifier, we will say. Okay, so for that some rules are there, right? 
so number and dollar sign should not come first okay underscore can have okay it can have alphabets beginning numbers it can have in between you can have the underscore also okay then port list after that module name it will come okay what and all inputs and outputs are there just you are listing out and then whatever listed out in that you are differentiating it is input output okay different port declarations are there in out like that that we will do it next and then optional parameters if there is any global constant so that we are going to do and all that comes under the module definition part okay then port list and port declarations okay are present only if the module has any ports to interact with the external environment okay normally in a stimulus block you don't have this in all design blocks this is required okay so that's why it is there the five components within a module are variable declarations whatever i explained to you that only listed out variable declarations register and uh, wire data flow statements assign instantiation of lower level modules gate level description behavioral blocks like uh, initial and always and then tasks or functions okay so these are the five blocks within a uh, module so this is the important question also they will be asking okay so we'll explain one by one this five parts in briefly these components can be in any order and at any place in the module definition okay these are some of the points you can remember so these components can be in any order okay the five components okay not the module and end module okay uh, you can write the behavioral first then data for any order you can write no issues the end module statement must always come last in a module definition it should be at the end only okay then all components except module module name and end module are optional okay so any module if you are writing module should be there and module name compulsory should be there okay and end module should be there this is Uh, something which you have to be catch okay so module module name and the last you are writing end module in between it may be optional okay so if you give only this much also the uh, program will run okay without giving any output whereas optional and can be mixed and matched as per design needs okay verilog allows multiple modules to be defined in a single file okay that means you are writing one module module name and you will end module again you can write one more module so all this you can write it in a single module okay and all the verilog programs are saved as dot v as c programs are saved program dot c same way this is saved as dot v extension okay the modules can be defined in any order in the file okay so whichever module you can write first there also there is no hierarchy this also this only you have to write first like that okay continuing further so we'll see an example okay so don't try to understand too much here so just what we are trying to understand here is just identifying the components okay so just trying to identify which are the components present and which are not okay so we'll just try to understand whatever concept you understood try to understand from this example of a sr latch okay set reset latch to understand the components of a module shown above let us consider a example of an sr latch the sr latch has here s and r as the input ports okay so this is the diagram you have here s and r as the input ports and q and q bar as the output ports whatever shown outside okay so this is input okay so left side whatever normally we will write a convention left side input and right side outputs okay so diagrams you know so it is implemented using two nand gates cross connected okay so this is the picture using this only we are trying to write the program okay so this is a gate level description example for a gate level description okay so we'll see how the program looks like okay just uh, write down the diagram okay so module sr underscore latch this is the module name okay so module keyword then module name is sr underscore latch anything you can give sr latch okay or latch underscore sr any way you can write that then port list whatever there so any order you can write again okay q q bar s bar and r bar whatever is there in the same order we will be writing it okay you can write it any order no issues and then here also input you can write first output so this is called as port declarations more about that we will be looking at second part okay so this first part modules so second part we have port declare there we will learn about this how to declare 
so keywords so here q q bar are the outputs and s bar r bar are the inputs so just they are declared okay so then we are writing the programming part okay so this is a gate level description i told you again this we will learn it in module 3 okay module 3 first unit we will be learning about how to write gate level description so now just try to tell you so the two lines are there because it is implemented using nand gates now so first nand gate you have the n1 and second nand gate it is called as n2 so output will be written first and then we are writing the inputs okay so just if you refer the previous diagram okay so for n1 gate what you have n1 gate you have s bar and there is another input coming from q bar okay so s bar and q bar are the inputs q is the output similarly this is n2 okay so this is a print mistake from the book itself okay so this is n2 you make here what is the input here this is q and then it is r bar and the output is q bar okay that is what there it is written in the program so n1 first q q s bar and q bar are the inputs and second n and gate q bar is the output r bar and q is the input okay so this is the program end module okay so in this program just what you try to understand is which are the components were used and which we have not used so there are many components in the program we have told so module module name port list is there then port declaration is there parameter is not there so it is optional we told it is not there declaration of variables is also not there what we have here is instantiation of lower level modules okay so from the sr latch module i called the lower level module nand gate okay so that part is there remaining behavioral data flow task and function nothing is there and it end module has come to the end so this is the observation you have to do here okay so then similarly we will write the stimulus block here so here little bit difference you will get okay so in the stimulus block so just you have a module keyword and then module name okay so there is no list of ports here or port declarations but instead you got here declaration of variables okay the outputs are declared here as wire q q bar and because they are driver right driving the output whereas inputs are given set and reset because they have to hold the value for a certain period of time that's why it is declared as register then lower level modules we have instantiated sr latch program design block we have called with a name m1 so in outputs we have written first q q bar and the inputs are passed like set and reset we have given as input its complement we are sending because there it is s bar and r bar is there in the design that's why while sending only we will complement the value and send okay set and reset is the inputs okay so this is not complete and end module is not there continue to second page okay so you are able to understand right so this is the stimulus block here list of ports and port declaration is not there whereas declaration of variable is there instantiation of lower more module is there okay then we have the behavioral block okay it starts with initial we are giving the values to the sr latch now s and r 00011011 so these values we have to give and we have the system task to monitor the output whatever values we have given so it should be written beginning or at the end okay any order also you can write that so how the values are given so dollar monitor dollar time this writing sequence set equal to percentage b reset equal to percent b that means in binary it should be displayed and what is the output for that combination okay so set reset value 0 0 what is the q like that we have to so set is 0 reset is 0 initially at 0 time unit then at 5 reset is made 1 and another 5 time minutes that is 5 plus 5 at a time time minutes reset is made again 0 another 5 time minutes set is made 1 okay like that we have given the value and whatever values as it changes to the every 5 time minutes it will be observed in the monitor statement monitor statement will observe this change of output okay so this set and reset value negatively it will be sent to the sr latch design block design block will compute it and answer will be fed back Okay. so that's how it is in the background it will work and all that will be done by the computer aided design tools so you should only bother about writing the program clear so initial begin we have started so that's why end and then comes the end module keyword okay so 
comparing the, uh, these two examples of a design block and stimulus block so you'll get some uh, observations okay so what are those observations you will be seeing in the sr like definition above notice that all components described need not be present in a module right all were not okay we do not find variable declarations data flow statements or behavioral blocks in the first part of the design block right however the stimulus block for the sr latch contains module name wire register and variable declarations instantiation of lower level modules behavioral block okay and end module statement okay, but it does not contain port list and port declarations as well as data flow statements understood so this is the observation thus all parts except module module name and end module are optional and can be mixed and matched as per design needs okay so this is about today uh, what we have learned is what is module okay components of module which are the components optional and which are required okay so all these things we come to know so you got some little bit picture about the uh, a structure of the verilog module so in the second next video we'll be trying to understand the ports part okay uh, port declarations uh, rules okay so all these things we try to understand so once it is done uh, it is the declaration part is done then you are able to write the program in the gate level description that is the beginning of the module 3 okay so whatever you have not gone through so far also you can go back okay so with this we'll end the video today Uh, if you like the video okay so please uh, i suggest you to click the like button okay thank you